nuestra cita de hoy es con el Street Art. Te veo después de la apertura para disfrutar de una visita guiada por las calles de Williamsburg. Vení conmigo. Why the Williams Park and Brooklyn, this part of Brooklyn, became such a, an iconic place for, uh, for yeah. having all this concentration of street art? Well, I think a lot of people settled in this uh, area. I mean, came uh, in the 80s and 90s, uh, artists came here uh, to take up some of the industrial spaces when manufacturing left and uh, started to really bring like a vibrancy to this neighborhood that has now actually, you know, has sort of been discovered uh, and it's changed now, even some of the artists are actually moving out as it's, the, the, the neighborhood's changing. Okay, this is a bolt up by uh, Classic B. Uh, and bolt ups actually are signs that are put in, almost make up, look like regular street signage. Now we see the same character over there. It's the same guy, yeah. It's, he's actually right here, and then he's actually right down there too. With a different, wow. uh, here he's using different techniques, right? Stickers, yeah. Stickers are a very popular part of uh, street art. Uh, one thing that's really cool about stickers is you, they're called slaps. You kind of slap them and run. Like, so, you know, it's like you're not, you're not sitting there drawing or, or taking a lot of time. So it's, it's like a fun, easy way. And it's also a way people have a conversation. You can put different messages on there and kind of interact with people. Uh, it's almost a subculture of, of street art. And he goes by CERN One or Cernesto. And he uh, affiliated with his crew is called Why Am I, which stands for You Might Imagine. And this is a piece he did for the bar over here. So it has the music and the different, uh, you know, the guitar and everything. It's for this Beko bar here. Oh, wow. Um, Look at these. Yeah, so he's, his style, like typically, um, he has kind of recurring characters he does. So like these elephants and cats are typical of his work. Um, and then also this, uh, like these houses on stilts here is another thing you'll see with him. He plays a lot with perspective as well. Where is the artist from? He's here, he's based out of here in New York. Um, he actually hosts other artists. He's host artists from Brazil and Ireland. Uh, he also travels a lot. And you'll notice a couple features of, uh, that you see here, like you see the Coney Island font here. You got also got the Armani logo down here. Uh, and then the way the collaging of the, uh, you know, the words and stuff. Another thing, uh, Dane, he, he lets the, does the drip. So he, a lot of times he's known for doing a circle over the eye and allows it to drip. And then he'll mix the woman's face with the, uh, the man's suit jacket body, which is typical. Uh, he'll do that a lot, although he's been breaking some of the rules that we're accustomed to. And you'll also notice there's like these Mickey Mouse ears kind of here too. So there's a lot of features there that you know from Dane. And this is something like a light post where he'll print you know, hundreds of these and just put them up, like the same image. So it's a way that he's able actually to kind of just get to get his name out in like in mass. I see Sada from Iran. They came here uh, about two years ago. Uh, this is one of the first pieces they did when they arrived here. Uh, they're from Tabriz and also they, they stenciled in Tehran, they're brothers. Um, and they use a lot of, they focus on like human rights type uh, stuff. They use children to kind of exhibit that. So dream, hope, free is sort of the, the messaging that they, they're bringing forth. This is Gilf's work here. This uh, KFC, uh, you see the Colonel Sanders on top of this uh, six winged mutant bird here. Uh, and that was her, basically her statement about food supply and, and messing with the food supply. So this was her way of sort of making a statement about that. Uh, and Lunar New Year is originally from Jersey. You know, and he does a lot of this kind of heavy duty cross hatching, see the white and the black, and then there's like that gray behind it. Uh, all the heavy symbolism with the snakes and the three different uh, head ornaments over there. You got the uh, swords. It's kind of a narrative, almost like a mythical style that he portrays. And then the other artist who compliments him really well, another uh, New Jersey based artist, Joe Irado, who goes by the name O1, which stands for one second. It takes to pick yourself up from adversity. Sometimes you'll see that work together and you see the coloration is very similar. Yeah, very similar. Uh, and one of the big differences between these pieces is that's freehead and this is uh, stencil work. So you see all the tapering, everything. It's like a, what I'd call like a fine art stencil where it's all the layering and stuff as opposed to like the simple kind of exacto knife cut 
kind of quickie one layered stencil. This is C215 and he's from Paris. Uh, his name is Christian Gueme, uh, pardon the pronunciation, I, I don't don't we'll speak French, uh, but it's a G-U-E-M-Y. And he's a very uh, established uh, artist in his own right, has, has a couple degrees, and uh, he travels a lot, so he features a lot of the people that he sees on his travels. Uh, he likes to focus on people like refugees, orphans, elderly, people that may not get as noticed in society. Uh, this particular piece is really nice because you can see the uh, what they call bridging and stenciling. That's where you have to the, the kind of have the the gaps so that everything kind of connects, so everything doesn't just fall right through the paper. And you see a good marrying of like the logistics of having to do bridging with the uh, the, the wrinkles of his subject. So it's, these two things come together very nicely on that piece. And David, what about this piece that we have in our work? Uh, we're looking at Aroa here. Uh, he's uh, from Ghent, Belgium, uh, and that's what he's known for, these uh, black and white uh, monochromatic animals uh, that he does. Uh, he's actually a fan of Darwin's origin of species, so the animals are always like biologically what you would actually see in the wild. And he only does animals that are uh, native to the areas that he's working in. So like here you have the raccoon and the squirrel and the fox are all animals where if we weren't in this urban jungle here, they'd, they'd probably be walking still. around. Yeah. Right. So this has been an amazing tour. Thank you, David, so oh, much. Oh, yeah. You're very we welcome. So glad and, you came. <laughs> and uh, we say goodbye to our audience. Nos vemos el próximo jueves en nuestro próximo capítulo sobre el arte. Y si todavía no te suscribiste a Cosmo Arte TV, te invitamos a que lo hagas. Chao, chao.